Hi and welcome to this synth synthesis recipe tutorial. This I guess will be synthesis recipe number one and we're going to try to in this series of recipes try to find just basically some online sources. Uh, people have posted a lot of different online tutorials doing synthesis in various plugins uh, like Logic or well, various apps too, like Logic Pro or using uh, commercial synths or commercial plugins. And we're going to try to emulate those within Super Collider to give you an idea both of uh, how synthesis gets done and also how to uh, create code within Super Collider to sort of emulate some of these sounds. Now I'm starting out uh, with a basic kind of synth def template. We've covered these in our mouse theremin tutorials and these are up on my channel as well. Uh, or you can just copy it down, pause the video, and just copy this right now. But basically, we have a, just a basic template, which includes uh, controls arguments for pitch uh, using uh, MIDI note numbers, a linear pitch um, scale, uh, arguments for amp, and various arguments for um, the envelope, as well as a, a trigger, which um, let's just make a default one for now. Uh, a trigger for the envelope. Okay, so if you don't, if this is Greek to you, go ahead and look at some of those previous videos. Uh, and uh, you're right, so your basic envelope, and then th this is mostly this area here is mostly what we'll be concerned with. Because right now this is just using a sine wave. Okay, so um, let's have a look. I have found this video on trying to get that Vangelis sound, and this fella here has very kindly done um, a video on it. So let's kind of follow along. We'll listen and then we'll see what ways we can implement things in Super Collider. So this is done in Logic Pro. Hi, welcome back to Three Circles Audio's YouTube channel. So let's have a look to see how uh, he does it in ES2. Um, I've in got Logic a complete Pro. reset patch here. So we're starting from sine waves. So it's it's essentially the same. It's two oscillators, both set to sawtooth. Okay, so we're dealing with two sawtooth oscillators. So we're going to maybe have an OS1 and an OS2. Okay. Let's do, and he's already said that they are going to be sawtooth oscillators. So we'll make this OS1 here. And we'll make this saw.ar. And then we will make an OS2. Copy that. And make this a saw. AR as well. And we're going to keep them at the same frequency for now and just see what happens. All right. And then just while we're doing this, let's go ahead and create a, a variable called sig. Okay. And we'll use this mix um, ugen. So we're going to say sig equals mix dot AR. Okay. And the two parentheses there. Now within the two parentheses, mix takes an array of signals. Okay, and I don't know if you've had if we've gone over this before, but an array happens within those square brackets right there. So we have to put all of our oscillators in in these brackets, but also in square brackets. So we're going to have at least for now we have an os one and an osc two, and they're just separated by commas. Okay, and then our out is not no longer just the os. In fact, that doesn't exist anymore. But in fact, we're going to send the signal out. Okay, so this will mix both saw wave sawtooth oscillators. And let's see what kind of changes he makes. We want the pitch of the second one to modulate, so I'm just going to have it modulating ever so slightly on the LFO. So mix the two together here. Just turn the, uh, the rate of the LFO down. Okay, so it looks like we have to do some um, modulation on the second sawtooth oscillator. So we need a LFO, a low frequency oscillator, and we need to be able to control the rate and uh, sort of the pitch range of the LFO. Start by creating a low frequency oscillator. Uh, we'll call it LFO1. I'm not sure if we have more than one. And let's define that. We'll say LFO1 equals, and we'll make it a sine oscillator, S-I-N, a sine os dot, and then we can do KR, it's a control rate oscillator. Okay, so the frequency of the LFO, so low frequency oscillator, will be how often it goes up and down. 
uh, right, how often the sort of this, this pitch shift, this pitch bend happens. And that's how many times a second it goes both uh, up and down in pitch. So let's say we're modulating the pitch by maybe like a quarter tone or something, or even less than that really. So it'll go up a quarter tone above the actual pitch and then below say a quarter tone, but probably much less. Okay, so we have a frequency. So let's create an argument there and we'll call it LF FREQ. Okay. And let's set the default there to something really low. So up and down once every um, how many times a second? Uh, so oh, so it's that many times a second. So if it's once every two seconds, it'll be 0 0.5. Uh, well, let's try that. Yeah, maybe maybe a third. So once every three seconds, 0 0.333. Okay, let's try that. And then we'll put that in this LFFREQ. So that's going to that's going to be the frequency of our low frequency oscillator. All right. And then now, so this is going from one to negative one. All right. Uh, so we want to find a pitch range that it's going to go from. So uh, right at this moment, it'll it'll take the the standard pitch, say it's sixty middle C, and it'll oscillate between fifty nine and sixty one. Right, because it goes negative one to positive one. Okay, so actually, let's let's go ahead and just make that addition happen. So we'll have a pitch two, two, okay, and we'll have we'll have pitch two equal to pitch plus LFO one. Okay, and let's let's just see if that's working. Let's go ahead and pull that. So you can do dot pull, and it will um, it will you know come out. So let's send that. Okay. Oh, I didn't boot. So let me boot. Let me just send that, and then I will create a synth A equals synth, and it is chariots. Okay, and let's send that. Okay, so good. It is going 59 to 60, almost 61. Okay. Oh, that was very loud. Okay. So, um, okay. And then we're going to have a freak one and a freak two. That's why you didn't hear any results. So, um, let me just turn my system volume down to freak two. Um, and then os2 will be at freak 2, right? Okay, and we have to we have to convert it to as well. So let's change that to freak 1 and then freak 2 will be equal to pitch 2 dot MIDI. Okay, so and then we have to change that to freak 1. So the original thing had a pitch which comes in as this control rate argument. And we want to keep that the same. We only have one, one pitch because they're essentially both going to be at the same pitch except one's going to be oscillating, okay, and the other one's not, right? So we're going to keep that same pitch. So this is equal to this pitch that came in. It's that control rate argument. The pitch 2 is equal to the, the original pitch that came in, and then we're going to add this LFO, this sine wave oscillator LFO 1, okay, and we pulled it to make sure that was oscillating just to check. Now... Then this stage right here, we convert them from the MIDI note numbers to a frequency that's usable uh, in our UGENs, in our sawtooth UGENs, which is uh, hertz, cycles per second, right? So we need a separate one for the original pitch, that's the oscillator one, and we need another one for the secondary pitch, which is this, the modulated one, okay, and that's oscillator two. All right, so now if we add that, and then listen to it. Okay, I mean that that's not what we want exactly, but you know we just are making some. Then we make some adjustments. Then, so what we want then is it's going, like I said, one negative one and one. So it's going a whole step, fifty nine to sixty one. So it's more like a very slow vibrato than anything, okay? But to get that sort of phasey shift kind of thing, we want it 
a much tighter range. All right, so we can do um, a simple multiplication then. So pitch uh, plus LFO one, and we'll put those in. Let's make this a little bit clear. So pitch plus LFO one. Um, Oh, that was only for poles. We can get rid of those. Sorry, we don't need those external um, parentheses. LFO one, and then we're going to times it by some kind of uh, um, multiplier order. You know, just a percentage change. So if we want it, for example, it's going to go one full whole half step up, one half step down. Uh, we can make it something smaller. But instead of hard coding it, why don't we make it a variable? Okay, so we can say. Um, um, we can say uh, D2. Okay, we'll call it times D2. All right, so we'll make that an argument up here, D2. All right, and um, um, <coughs> right, uh, sorry. So if it's times one, it's just gonna go a whole step, right? If we do 0.5, it's gonna be half step. Um, it's probably much smaller than a half step. I'm wondering if it's one tenth. It might even be point 0.1. So let's see what happens if it's 0 0.1, and we'll have a listen and see how that sounds. Okay. Okay, it's not bad. Let's have a listen and see how, what he's got up to. Good. Turn the filter. That's pretty good. Turn the filter Anything's down. Anything's a little bit quicker here. Just turn the, the rate of the LFO down. I want the pitch of the second one to modulate, so I'm just going to have it modulating ever so slightly on the LFO. Oh, so it's 0.18. Mix the two together It's 1.7 hertz. Okay. So we're going to actually read the readings. So 0.12, 0.09. Just turn the, the LFO down. 0.26 hertz. That's pretty good. Turn. So let's do 0 0.082 hertz. So we're going to change our LF frequency to 0 0.082 hertz, right? And then detune. He had it. What did we say? Uh, here we're going to read it here. I suppose I can make this bigger if I want. But uh, 82 hertz and the detune was. Oh well, we'll have to sneak it back here. <laughs> Two oscillators, uh, sorry, both set. Point zero nine, but zero point one two. Okay, so that's the detune point one two. So we're pretty close there, already. And of course, you can change these using the set argument. But right now, we'll just hard code these things, and then see what happens. And then, since these are arguments, you can change them as you go. Uh, you know, and experiment. It doesn't have to sound like Vangelis, but this gives you an idea of how to get this. So. Right now, just to explain conceptually what's happening is we have two saw waves going. One saw wave is just playing at a pitch. The other saw wave is playing at the same pitch, but it's it's got a little bit of basically vibrato on it, but very very closely tuned vibrato. So it's really detuning by 0.12 uh, of a of a of a whole step. So one a little bit more than one tenth of a of a whole step, one tenth of a step. You know, uh, up and down, and that causes just that phasey sound, uh, kind of a phaser sound. Really, it's a timbral change rather than any sort of pitch change you might imagine. So we get that beating there, all that rah, 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 you hear is beating. Um, so I feel like the detune maybe when they say 0 0.12, maybe they're talking about. Um, absolute, so it changes, it, it tunes, detunes by 0 0.12, maybe not up and down, so maybe it's half of that, 0 0.6, because we're going up 1, 2, and down 1, 2 from the original thing. So that's a possibility. Let's give that a shot, and maybe otherwise we can just do it by ear. It sounded like our original was a little bit better, but...
And I have a feeling the same ha applies here to the frequency, though th it does say hertz, didn't it? Um, but maybe in inverse. Well, it just sounded like that 0.1 was better, but let's try 1.6 and let's see what that sounds like. So we're doubling it because maybe it's not going up and down on there. Well, it's not bad either way, and you know you can just fiddle with that. It's kind of kind of a fiddly Damn. thing. I think he is getting that beating sort of thing happening here. That's pretty good. Turn the filter down. Um, the third envelope here is for the amp, so we're just gonna create a similar kind of thing and this um, this envelope we're going to use on the filter so again we're going to have okay so he's getting a bit attacks. carried away here that's pretty good turn the filter down uh, turn the effect not bad Again, just turn the, the reverb up. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, so I think we're kind of getting there. I, I, I'm not sure I want to do everything it does because this is supposed to be kind of a beginner tutorial. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So I think maybe we were good with 0.08. We'll just stay to that that frequency. Okay, so we have that kind of sound now. Uh, I just noticed that he talked about adding um, a filter. Okay, she said let's turn that filter down. So let's just. I think it's just simply a low pass. I mean, we can we can kind of we can kind of look. It's a low LP low pass filter, right? And he just has that cut down, and then he's putting an envelope on that filter. Uh, well, let's let's go for it. I, I'm sure you can handle it. This is supposed to be my number one synth recipe. I thought it would be really, really straightforward just mixing two oscillators, but he does quite go into some detail. And maybe it's good that we build this structure because it, many of the other synth recipes will be something quite similar, just applying uh, envelopes and filters and LFOs to different things, okay? So uh, one of the things we do then is to add a filter to the final output. So after the, the signal's mixed, we're gonna put a low pass filter on it. And we just can basically kind of eat, since um, programming happens you know, in order, so it runs this line, then it runs that line, and then it runs the next line, we can eat the same variable, SIG, and we can use itself as the source. So we can say SIG equals resonant low pass filter dot ar that's a ugen for low pass filter and then the end will be itself sig the signal which is the mix signal there okay and then we're going to have a, a frequency so it will be lpf or eq like that maybe and we'll make that very ar variable here argument there so we can change that so this becomes if we just run it as it is like we're doing it becomes that sort of vangelis patch hopefully but then also you have these arguments that you can tweak and play with and create other things too. So really it's it, it's in some ways both the one patch but also maybe a template for creating your own weird sounds. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm creating a bunch of arguments. LP, FREQ, low pass freak. Um, and let's just make an extra line here so I can see a little bit better or you can see a little bit better. And uh, he turned it down about halfway. Did, did it give any kind of reading there? The cut, so I'm I'm imagining that's like twenty thousand, and that's zero. So maybe this side of it, maybe in the seven thousand range or something like that. Let's try it, and we can also just adjust it using either the set or adjusting it there. Okay, so we're gonna maybe do it at a seven thousand. Okay, let's see how that sounds. So still may maybe slightly bright, maybe make that 5,000. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm seeing that he has an envelope that changes. Uh. Okay, uh, that sounds pretty good so far. And uh, let's just 
carry on from where he was. Have to turn up a bit more. Give us a slightly on the LFO. So mix the two together here. Turn the filter down. Um, the third envelope here is for the amp, so we're just gonna create a similar kind of thing and this amp this envelope we're gonna use on the filter so again we're gonna have long attacks, long releases. I want that sustained to be okay. I'm well. gonna back up here and so turn the filter he's messing with the, um, just turn the good, turn the filter down. Um, the third envelope here is for the amp, so we're just gonna 410 milliseconds on attack, let's remember that. Create a similar kind of thing. And, and 4,000 milliseconds, so four seconds on a release. What a long release. So uh, 410 we said on attack, so that's a pretty long attack. Okay, so we can do that right now. We can just say 410, and then the release will be 4,000, which is four seconds. Okay, so let's just hear how that sounds. Um, um, is this a, a, a hit and hold? Uh, sorry, let me just this skip ahead. Um, this envelope it's we're going to use on the filter. So again, we're going to have a bit slow there. All right, that's uh, attack. Okay, so let's have a set here so we can hear the release at least. So we'll have A dot set, and the trig will be zero. Okay, so that'll release our envelope. So if we send that here and just have a, a listen to what that sounds like there. Okay, and let's change the curve to zero. Um, get that. Okay. And then we're going to go back. We said we're at five something, five, something like that. And we're going to look Just at the changes the, he makes the, to the, the, LFO down. the filter on the That's pretty good. Turn the filter down. Um, the third envelope here is for the amp. So we're just going to create a similar kind of thing. And this, amp, this envelope we're going to use on the filter 350. And so again, we're going to have 2200, 350 and 2200. I'm going to forget those. 2200. Okay. So now what we do is we need to create a second envelope, and this is going to control the filter frequency. Okay. So it's this main envelope here, and we'll just leave that ENV, um, is controlling the final amplitude of our, so the attack and the, the release of our overall sound. All right, but what we'd like to do is create another one that's going to modulate the the filter frequency. This LP freak, okay. So this will probably be replaced. So we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, probably get rid of that argument there. So let's do an envelope, um, but that can be the final freak. Anyways, let's make another envelope, and so I'll do the same thing. I'll create a new line for the variance because I'm getting overwhelmed here, and we will say. F E N V F envelope filter envelope, okay, and then we'll make that filter envelope here. I can make it anywhere. I'll just put it at the top. F E N V equals, and remember we have to use the E N V gen dot A R U gen, okay, and then within that we're going to have another envelope, okay. So we'll have uh, a tax sustain release because I don't think there is any. Decay, he doesn't use a decay, so we'll just use the env.asr, tax sustain release, okay? And I can make these all, I can make these all, um, um, I can make these all arguments too if you want to do that. Um, yeah, why not, okay? We'll make these all, it gets, it gets a little bit verbose and a little bit maybe messy or something like that, but um, this way you can play around using the set and and experiment. So let's just go, let's just use them all with F, F A T K. Uh, sustain level will be one, the release will be F R E L and F C R V. Okay, 
and then don't forget that close parenthesis so we have our envelope and then we have the same gate though so it's going to be triggered at the same time the overall amplitude envelope is triggered right so let's use the trig so this though has to be after the trig which where is it? Ah, oh, trig is just an argument up here. Okay, so let's create all those arguments, which have F, A, A, T, K, and we said that it was going to be equal to 350 milliseconds, so 0 0.350, and then F, R, E, L is going to be, as a default, equal to 2200, so 2.2 .2 seconds. And the, we'll just make the FCRV equal to zero, no curve there. Okay, and you can play with that. So now the only thing is, is this is going from zero to one, right? So uh, basically, we're going to times multiply the LP frequency. So that's going to the maximum frequency of 5,000. So maybe we'll make that a little bit bigger, 7,000, so it gets brighter at the tail end. Okay, and um, it's actually. Uh, we, we can also maybe add something because it's starting from zero, so it's going from no, no, uh, you know, no, nothing coming through basically, uh, up to seven thousand. So what we'll do is we'll multiply it by um, the env f e n v. Okay, so that'll that'll go attack you know over three hundred fifty milliseconds. It'll go from zero to seven thousand hertz. It'll just shift shift that filter up. All right, but we probably don't want to start at zero. So what we'll do is we'll um, uh, add something to it. So maybe we'll start at like 100 hertz. Okay, starting from 100 and then going up to, actually it's going to go to 7100. I mean, if we want it to be really, really precise, we can go 69, you know, as the, but it's fine. 7100 should, should do just fine. Okay, so now when we attack it, it will, um, it will, send that filter up as well. So let's send that there and let's listen to how that sounds. Okay, so the decay of the um, of the filter is much, okay, we'll trigger one. Instead of re resending it, we'll have a trigger one. The decay of the filter sort of is more abrupt than the, the amplitude. Yeah, so it goes down quite, quite suddenly. So uh, I, I guess two things we can do is we can either make this uh, filter frequency equivalent or longer the release than the 4.1 there, or it can change the curve a little bit if we want to. Um, but maybe we'll just make this f longer for now and just see how that sounds. So let me, um, let me free that synth. Um, and then send this again. Actually, let me just recompile, reboot, because I just realized I probably sent a ton of those asynths without freeing them, so who knows what's playing. And So there's still a little bit of a click there. I mean, you know, this can, this can go on as long as we like, so... Um, you know, uh, let's make it 5.7, something like that, so that we don't hear that filter fade. I'm gonna free that, send that, and then listen to it again. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I'm I'm thinking maybe that it's still a little bit too bright, so we can turn that down. Maybe we'll split the difference. Okay, so let's see what else this guy gets up to. Long attacks, long releases. Oh, oh all right. Sustained to be up as well. And I'm just going to set the cutoffs one and two to envelope two and turn the effect knob up.
Okay, so he did a lot of things there, so let's try to catch up. So he went to point six, and he, uh-oh, he had the attack at, ooh. Okay, let's, let's scan back through, see if we can get it. Uh, oh, well, we'll just have to watch it again. Actually, that modulation is a bit cool. I'm just going to set the cutoffs one and two to envelope two and turn the effect knob up. So something like 1600. So the attack is 1.6, six seconds. And let's give that a go. Make sure we free that. And send that, let's see. Well, I don't know if that sounds exactly like his, but I really like it. Has that sort of Vangelis sound? Okay. Actually, that modulation is a bit quick as well. That's better. And again, just turn the the reverb up. Okay. So now uh, our job is to do some reverb. Okay. So a couple choices here. We have um, uh, one called free verb and we can just eat the signal again so sig equals uh, free verb okay let's go free verb to I don't know dot ar I don't know what the difference between the different ones are and in will be sig ah in two will be sig ooh all right so this is making a, a stereo so maybe that's what we'll do uh, the mix will be um, so we can adjust that mix, you know, you can have a wet dry mix. So 0.33, we'll just, uh, we'll say, we'll make them variables. MI, MIX, room, D, DMP, okay. And then we'll create all these, mix room DMP. And let's see, because then I was going to have to deal with stereo as well. Uh, sorry comma let's make a new line paste those in there so I'll have a mix uh, it was like a one-third but let's make it about 0 0.5 the room it was 0 0.5 we'll just keep that there and see dampening not much dampening at all right so uh, what are the what's the default dampen is 0.5 let's just make the, hardly any dampening at all 0 0.1 let's just give that a try and see how that sounds okay So we need a much, much bigger reverb. So let's call it 0 0.01 and let's make the room, I don't know, can we make it bigger than one? Let's try that and then mix this point like eight. Let's do something like that. Uh, again, let me just, and let me put the parentheses there because this is getting a bit out of hand. So we'll send that to go. Uh, did I boot? I didn't boot. We'll send that to go. We'll send that. Whoa, okay. That's crazy. Okay, so way too much room. We'll just do that at 0 0.9. Maybe we weren't meant to go. Damping, maybe 0 0.7, 0.7. Mix seven. We'll just take it all down, and we'll see how that works. I think part of the problem is the free verb isn't the best free verb. Now, if you've installed, uh, I think I showed you. I mean, there's a video up there, anyways, for sure, how to install um, SC3 plugins. Okay, so we're gonna use an SC3 plugin. Otherwise, I mean, I think you can get these. 
let's just go to the net here. I think you can get these from um, D E N I D plugins. Uh, let's see. Um, Gray hole plugins, super collider. Um, here we go. These guys, D E I N D, the T A I Studio. They made these really nice, really great. You know, kudos to these guys. They're really great sounding. So there's a binary here that we can download it. Okay, and just follow my instructions for installing any extensions or plugins manually. Uh, you can find that video elsewhere. Uh, Windows and uh, Linux users, uh, I'm not sure. To tell you the truth, you can go to the GitHub, and I think there's a build that you can do. I think it's a little bit more complicated uh, for for you. Uh, in any case, we're just going to go. Um, uh, we're going to use the JP verb instead. So I'm going to actually comment that out because you can use a free verb. It's not the best sounding reverb. S I G equals, and we're going to use this J P V R B. The only problem with J P verb, as far as I can tell, is there's just a lot of arguments. So we'll make the sig in and uh, I don't not sure what the T60 argument but you know you can you can look at the help and just kind of experiment with the different settings I don't want to bog down this video too much with just me tweaking reverb so I'm just gonna sort of use the um, yeah it talks about reverse duration time in seconds all right so that's good so we're gonna deal with a pretty long reverb so let's see the default is one second, but let's go like four seconds, okay? And of course, you can make all of these. Um, I guess I made all these uh, um, arguments when maybe I shouldn't have. Mix room damp. Um, uh, one is strong damping, and zero is no damping. Okay, so um, we'll just. Keep that at 0 0.07, and we can put that in here. Oops, what did I do? Oops. Okay, we can put that in here as a damping. So, I mean, if, if you want to do reverb time, you can put all those in as arguments. But for now, why don't we just plug in hard values? Like I said, I don't want to sit here and just tweak things all day. So let's go um, damping at... Ah, why not zero? And it's a size. Um, values below one can sell metallic. Uh, zero point five to five. So let's do a size of like pretty massive. Let's do four, huh? And it says early diff um, controls shape of um, early reflections, mod death, mod freak. So you know I'm gonna leave all those other ones at. Um, the defaults and just play with these three uh, size dampening and the decay time in seconds okay and we just have to remember what those are and again you can assign those to arguments if you want but right now I'm just gonna leave them leave them be okay we'll make sure we free that guy and we'll send this again and then we'll see how that sounds ah that sounds much better And then let's, oh, okay, so the decay, I think, is too short. So um, let's, and I think that's our fault up here. So let's make the release even longer, say like six, and this release, say like six or seven, maybe seven. And let's see what happens there. We'll free that. <laughs> And then let's have a um, an octave like he, he likes to do. We'll say um, pitch equals 78. Okay, so we'll have one that triggers um, pitch 60 and one that triggers 78. Oh, why? Oh, 72, sorry, gosh.
Ah, and it's not even... It's really not even an octave. He goes a fifth, doesn't he? So that's... Uh, one, two, sixty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try what a fifth sounds like. Sixty-seven. Okay. Well, it's not perfect, and it could use a lot of tweaking. But that gives you the basic I idea of how you can, you know, in really a few lines of code, get to a pretty um, really sophisticated sound with lots of potential and possibilities. So just playing around with the reverb and the different kind of, uh, you know, LF frequencies and such like that. I did go kind of fast and there's a lot of information in there, but hopefully that gives you a sense of how to sort of synthesize, how to create these synthesis recipes. Okay. So I'll leave you with that, and good luck, good luck with it. Um, let me at least so give you the full a full screen, all the code on one screen. So if you want to pause and look at that, copy that. That sounds good. And let's just play us out. Mm -hmm.